right, welcome to day 22 of the 30-day servo pro, uh, motion project that we're doing. 30-day uh, project, we start from scratch, basically uh, the, the ACD file we've, we've uh, created and uh, the uh, HMI system that we created on Factory Talk uh, SE, and that's uh, version 7.0. So um, really no matter what version we're running, uh, you know, whether it be uh, Factory Talk, version uh, SE version 7 all the way up to 9 or 10 where they're gonna re they're gonna probably have 10 come out this year um, a lot of elements really don't change at all the, they add a lot more stuff to 10 or 9 I should say but um, when it comes to the ACD file um, you know we're version 20 um, as you know if you've been keeping track of the series uh, and it's it's an emulated process so uh, I will show you a couple of key tricks that we will be doing uh, to get this working, uh, the, the the alarms and events working on the uh, basically run the emulator. So first off, uh, we'll go ahead and download to our project, right? Get it running. Um, and this one is going to be basically so. If you recall, while that's downloading, we'll come over here. If you recall, in our um, header, right, the header that we had. We have an alarm summary. So in that alarm summary, we want the uh, alarms, any alarms we add to pop up. So how do we do that? So we use an ALMD instruction in the uh, Control Logics uh, platform. So in our, uh, I went offline, sorry. So um, better what I was saying, uh, in the ACD file, what we'll do is we'll come into the um, main control which is the uh, the main main routine and we'll, we're, go we're gonna add a uh, fault routine so we'll just call it faults our system faults <clears throat> okay so now we have system faults uh, we'll come back up here into our main routine we'll add a wrong uh, of course we'll JSR so we're gonna jump to subroutine to our routine we added Okay, so now that that's done, it is live. Okay, so um, in the last video, what we did is we came down and uh, we did the e-stop test, right? So if you recall, we did this e-stop relay um, off of our HMI. So what we want to do is we want to take this e-stop relay and say, for instance, uh, all these faults for access faults and stuff of that nature and make uh, alarms for them. And so what we want to do is we want to create a series of ALMDs. Now, it, you have two different, now I'll scroll over and show you this. So if you look, you have uh, alarms right here. You have two different types of alarms. You have a digital alarm, which is what we, we will be using in, in this scenario. And then you have an analog alarm. An analog alarm, uh, basically set, you can set the values to whatever you would like, um, you know, Four to twenty, you could say, "Hey, if it's uh, below four milliamps, um, you know, create an alarm. Or if it's getting, you know, uh, below eight milliamps, create a warning. Um, things of that nature." So we we won't be really digging into that. What I'd like to do is kind of dig into um, ALMDs. Um, so the first one, what we'll do, and to kind of give you a, a rough overview, let's go ahead and do instruction help, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll kind of show you, I mean, just in case you're not familiar with ALMDs, they automatically populate um, in, an, in an environment that you have, okay, so let's backtrack a little bit, in an environment where you have in your RS Links Enterprise in the HMI system that you have alarms active and you have this, these work off a, a, a severity base. So a low severity, a medium severity, a high severity, and an urgent severity, right? So we do happen to have that selected. Now we come back into our communications path. You also have to have you also have to have the processor that's selected. You also have to have alarms and events enabled. So a yes in this scenario. And we've already did that in prior videos. So I kind of won't, won't dig into that too much, um, but what I want to do is go through, again, this digital digital alarm. So as you can see, um, 
you know, you have an in alarm, you have act, uh, basically you have a acknowledge, a suppressed, uh, a, uh, a disabled, you have an instruction fault. Um, to using these elements, the things that you would want to use, again, um, basically the name of the tag, uh, that's just your name of your instruction, the name you want to put your, uh, the instruction instance, I should say. Um, the acknowledge bit, if you want to have an acknowledge bit, if you want to have a reset bit, if you want to have um, a disable bit, an en enable bit, um, the time durations and stuff of that nature. So um, they always give a good example of, of how they use things. So uh, in their example, they do a motor fault over temperature or a motor fail to start. They use a program acknowledge. We are not actually going to use that. We're not going to use anything just to show you exactly the way it works. They also have a great um, state alarm diagram if you would like to look at that. So uh, just looking at the state alarm diagram, you know, you can kind of see what happens and when it happens and why it happens, right? So, um, and that's easy, easily found by going and right-clicking instruction help. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and put a couple alarms in. Uh, what we want to do, again, is we want to grab this alarm bit, or this uh, bit we have right here, the first bit, which is going to be the e-stop relay. We want to jump back over and add that. So we'll paste that in there. And then we'll, we'll basically name this instruction. We'll say... Uh, Servo system alarm one, and then we'll just we'll keep cascading them down. Um, in this instance, right now, again, like I said, I'm not going to throw in any kind of um, any kind of controls. You know, if I if I want to acknowledge or something, I'm going to let that happen via the HMI. So I'm not going to actually have like uh, any kind of, uh, you could have an interface to it, but I'm not. Um, but then I want to keep adding the next several instructions. Um, so we have four servos, correct? So we have four, one, two, three, four. Um, I want to come back in and say uh, anything that could stop the state machine. So anything that could stop the state machine into a not ready bit, right? So... Um, you could say uh, the OK bit, uh, use the OK bit, copy that over there, and go paste it right here, 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 I'm sorry, here, Let's get rid of that, and here. Now, obviously, we want to change this to axis 2, axis 3, axis uh, 4, actually, let me just... X out of that, let's delete that and paste it again. Okay. Okay, axis four. We want to change these to a state where they're going to be uh, highlighted as a, you know, they're, uh, well, I tell you what, that's, that's used in reverse. So it's true the way it is. Okay. So again, we want to add an ALMD uh, at the back, back side of the, the alarm. So this is basically, if you recall, and I'll, I'll show you this real quick. Let's just go back and, and see where this bit's derived from, right? So that's if any of the faults, if there's a fault in the servo, if there's a, if the group fault, if there's an axis fault, there's a module fault, or the configuration fault, then the axis uh, OK status bit will drop. Well, all I'm going to say is that the axis is faulted. So... Uh, first and foremost, we'll grab this tag, copy, I'm a big copy-paste guy, right? So, let's go to this. Okay, so I, apparently I messed that up. Co let's copy this. New tag and paste. So, we'll call this 2. We'll call this... three and then we'll call this again four okay so now we have um 
a distinction between each one of these, right? We have every instance has its own tag name, so they will not get confused as far as that goes. The system will get confused on what's what, who's who. So again, we're not going to use any of the elements right now um, at all, probably not for this. You can really kind of make a whole new series of videos for that. Um, so I won't go into how to use those, but it's pretty obvious, you know, program acknowledge, just have an HMI acknowledge bit or program reset. You can any kind of reset, right? Oh, and I forgot one, didn't I? Yes, I did. So I labeled these. Okay, actually, I want to stop that. Peer, paste, and this would be five. So it's a fifth alarm, even though it's only our fourth servo. So not to not to get everything confused. Now let's set up the alarms. Um, these so an e stop will be a severity of one thousand. And what we want to do in the message is we want to come down here and we want to put the tag. So we, what we want to do first is we want to create a we want to create a name or uh, basically a string tag. So a string, and then we'll put uh, alarm one descript. And it would help if I spelled that right, would it? Uh, let's just put description. Let's copy that. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to pop right in here. We'll go back and put our description in there. Now we'll come down to this spot, uh, which is the message that to be displayed, right? We'll come in and we'll put tag one, add it, and then basically that's finished. In this instance, uh, class of uh, is if you have multiple levels. Um, we only have one, but we will throw our class in there just to show that fact. That's just showing your processor. So if you had a different processor or a different uh, area, I should say, then you could put it in there. So we'll go ahead and accept this. Uh, that's finished. We'll come down and do the same thing here. Uh, we'll add a tag. We're going to name this what description uh, alarm to description uh, again change this to string it's a string value right so uh, come down and in our messages we want to change our message to add the uh, first set you can add multiple sets if you want I'm only adding one in this in this instance um, this is going to be a servo fault so let's just say it's going to be a 750 alarm um, Go down and do the same thing here. Servo faults of 750. Um, we'll put our basically put our, our tag in there that we're gonna we're making. Uh, it's a string again. Okay, so uh, that said, we'll come down and in instance our variable. We're gonna put in tag one. Hit apply, and then do the same thing in, in number four. So just keep uh, adding this stuff in here until it's finished. Not to kind of drag this on, you know, I, I kind of would not like to keep you doing redundant stuff, but you kind of, some of this stuff might be helpful to see multiple times. You know, it's not exactly a, a clear picture sometimes to see what's going on. So this may may uh, may help you out. Um, if you've done alarms and events before, it's probably you know it's probably not helpful. But I mean, who knows? You may see a different pattern or different way to do it. I'm not sure. So uh, again, just we're just about done, um, and we put that in. Oh, hit add and verify. I always hit add before. Nope. See, I didn't put add, so add. So it's, it's good to double check yourself sometimes because, you know, sometimes you will, like I have been, uh, messing up and it, things won't work and you'll come back and try to backtrack, figure out why, and 
most of the time you can hit your stuff correctly the first time if you obviously double check your work. So uh, real quick what we've done is we have added our five faults that we're going to do. We've added the ALMDs, we've added the uh, string and, and uh, the string value of the ALMD that we're going to use. We've added the uh, reference to which string or where to look for the information. We've added our severity levels, which we get from, uh, we derive from up here uh, in our RS Links Enterprise. We derive from our severity levels being right here, right? So again, uh, 1 to 20, 250 is low, uh, 251 to 500 is medium. 501 to 750 is high, 751 to 1000 is, is obviously high, or urgent, I'm sorry. So that's what we're using, that's what we're deriving them off of, and that's where I'm getting this severity level. Um, you've seen how I get, did this, I, I put in the data first, and then I came back and picked it. Um, so you can change this to latch, unlatched, if you wanted to, uh, we can kind of go over that uh, in a different video. But I just wanted to show these um, and, and show that, you know, that's how you basically install them. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and populate the data and we'll get it working. And then in the next video, I will tell you there's a small trick that I will show you that will be very, very helpful. So um, when it comes to getting alarms and events working, if they do happen to fail on you. Enough, uh, enough of that though, because we've over over a 15 minute mark. So I'll go ahead and close this video out. Um, you know, so in today 20, uh, day 22 of this this project, uh, we've added our LMDs for our faults. We've added a routine for our faults, and uh, we will get them working in day 23. Okay, so again, uh, thanks for your time, thanks for your patience, and thank you for your support.